as uh, Sajid uh, asked me, um, what is the difference that I, when I consider myself as a Marxist and a socialist, and uh, how it is different from the kind of Marxism, the kind of uh, the brand name of Marxism that has been there in this society, uh, in in this country. I think, uh, I mean, it's a long story, but I will cut it. Try to cut it short. I mean, as he, as Sajid said. Uh, when I said democratic socialism, uh, and also use the word for socialism to work, democracy is a very uh, essential ingredient if the socialism has to work. Uh, and uh, 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 from that uh, aspect, there is a difference between uh, uh, the present uh, dominant theories that uh, go around as Marxism, whether it is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the so-called brand name of uh, CPIM, CPI, or even the uh, Maoists, what we call as Naxalites. Uh, Leon Trotsky, to which Sajid referred, was a was a co-leader of the Russian Revolution in 19 in the early uh, early uh, time of the 20th century. Uh, uh, he he was a he was a contemporary of uh, uh, Lenin, uh, and also a, a good orator, orator, and a good writer and a visionary. And but one thing that. Uh, uh, that separated him from the rest of the uh, rest of uh, his contemporaries was his sharp mind, sharp mind, not fearing uh, any dominant person or any dominant ideology to be questioned. In fact, uh, if there is one person in the entire uh, history of uh, Marxism after Marx, or two persons who have clashed uh, on an ideological basis, not on personal basis, is Lenin and Trotsky. They have clashed between themselves uh, through words, through written material, uh, of difference of opinion, and at the, end, at the end of the day, they also came together. When it mattered, they came together and uh, they led, or uh, they led the Bolshevik party which became successful in overthrowing the Tsar in 1917. To give one flavor of what through who Trotsky was, uh, I mean, which, which is the basis of all the problems that the Communist parties face today, 12 years before the Russian Revolution of 1917, in 1905, there was a revolution in uh, Russia which failed. Which, did, which was not successful. After the 1905 revolution, in which both Lenin and Trotsky were just onlookers, they were looking at the revolution, they were, they were, they were already Marxists, they were organizing themselves. At that time, the, uh, the organization in which both of them were working was called as the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, RSDLP. And after the 1905 revolution, uh, which failed, Trotsky took upon himself, not because of anybody asked him, but took upon himself to write a thesis as to analyze the failed revolution. And uh, he came up with a, a long uh, a thesis called Theory of Permanent Revolution. And in which he argued that uh, which I tried to explain in my uh, uh, introduction, in which he argued that uh, the role played by the bourgeois, that is the capitalist class, in the early uh, in the early revolutions of uh, the industrial revolutions of Europe, or even in France, one cannot expect them to play the same role in the coming period, especially in the ex-colonial or neo-colonial neo countries, or what we popularly called as uh, third world countries. And he said 
that uh, to expect a similar law, uh, role uh, uh, by the bourgeoisie to finish up the existing modes of production and developed society would be tomfoolery. Hence, he said, the task of developing society from a feudal morass to a new advanced uh, modern society where oppression of all characters, of all feudal characters is ended, that task will also fall upon the working class themselves. And then the working class cannot stop at overthrowing the regime of Tsar, but they will have to take up these tasks as also and not bring the, the, the capitalist class to power. Until at that time, it was argued within the Marxist circles that the stage of the socialist revolution will only come after the bourgeois democratic revolution, that is the capitalist democratic revolution is happened, I mean is it's finished. That means developing society, abolishing feudalism, abolishing land relations and uh, freedom of expression, all blah blah blah, all those laws come into existence. Then once those democratic uh, tasks have been completed, then we can ask the capitalist class to go and we will come, that is the working class will come. Trotsky differed from that view. He said, the coming revolution will not be of that character. And that's what happened in Soviet Union as well. Until 1917 April, Ma uh, Lenin and Trotsky were, on, were in opposite camps. Not opposite camps, but in, at least they were not in the same organization. Once the RSDLP split in 2012, two separate wings emerged. One is the Bolshevik party, which was led by Lenin. The another one is the Menshevik party, which was not led by Trotsky, as the Stalinist parties would like to make, uh, make out or uh, uh, really give the false information. Trotsky remained for a period of more than five years independent. He did not join any party, any of the wings of this RSDLP. But of course, he did help some of the Menshevik theoreticians to formulate their ideas. He did edit some of their formula of their uh, uh, articles and as, uh, hence history says that he was also a Menshevik, but he, he was not Menshevik. Both Lenin and Trotsky were exiled by Tsar. They were sent out of uh, Russia. In fact, they themselves left. In 1917, in April, Lenin returned to uh, uh, Russia to take charge of the revolution because it was developing. And well, as soon as he came to Russia, he removed Stalin from the, gen uh, from the editorship of Pravda for the reason that Pravda, the paper of the Bolshevik party, was advocating to support Kerensky, who was the bourgeois leader of that particular point of time, to do away with Tsar and to bring Kerensky to power. Lenin disagreed, and that's where he agreed with Trotsky. He said, our class, our peasantry, are not making all the sacrifices through their lives to bring a bourgeois to power. And that's where he used the word, he used the slogan, all power to the Soviets, that is the councils of workers and peasants. And he said, all power to the Soviets means that all the tasks, the bourgeois democratic tasks, alongside the social, social revolutionary tasks, will be uh, led and will be executed by the revolutionary forces themselves, that is the working class and the peasantry. That way, the ideas of Lenin and Trotsky fused at that particular point of time. And Trotsky also came back in July of uh, uh, 1917 and applied for the membership of uh, 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 Bolshevik party and Lenin with wholeheartedly accepted him and made a comment that Trotsky is the best Bolshevik outside the Bolshevik party. He accepted him and both of them led the revolution. In fact, the most difficult, most dangerous, most responsible task of uh, uh, forming a Red Army was given to Trotsky. He led the Red Army. He created a Red Army to fight against the 21 armies of the world which wanted to crush the Russian Revolution. And that's the 
This is the personal story of uh, uh, Trotsky. But what is more important from a historical point of view is that what was Menshevik idea, which continued to be the Menshevik idea, that the first is the first stage is the social democratic stage, and the next stage is so, so, uh, socialist stage, which will happen 100 or 200 years ago afterwards. And that idea is even today carried out by the communist parties around the world. If today, if you see the communist party of the Marxists and the communist party of India or any other communist parties, try to be friends with the capitalist class, try to be friends with the feudal elements, try to be friends with communal elements, it's because they think they are at the stage of social democracy. So, to strengthen capitalists and within capitalists search for progressive elements. And that is the theory on which the communist parties base themselves. And that is the difference that we have. And we do not cooperate and consider any section of the capitalist class as progressive. Because the nature of progressivism of the capitalist class internationally, universally has ended. They are no longer capable of developing society. Their progressive nature is lost because of the fundamental uh, contradiction of capitalism itself. It cannot coexist alongside nation states. Capitalism and nation states are too antagonistic in nature. Because of the nature of capital, it has to amass markets, amass profits, it will come in clash with different nations. Today, if uh, why is it Pakistan and India are fighting? Why are they fighting uh, uh, for a piece of land in Kashmir? Of course, it's beautiful, it's very uh, uh, rich in uh, this thing. But what is, what is that? Uh, both, are, both have imperialist ambitions, sub-imperialist at least, compared to America or China, I mean, or uh, Britain or anything. Both, China, both Pakistan and India have imperialist ambitions. Both oppress their neighbors. India oppresses Bhutan, Northeast, Kashmir, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Nepal. It shows its imperialist nature to these nations. Likewise, Pakistan also does to Baluchistan, to other, uh, uh, to other areas against Afghanistan. Why? Because fundamentally they cannot solve the contradictions of capitalism. Of course, there are huge uh, vestiges of feudalism in both the countries, but dominant productive force which makes tick, which makes their economy grow, is capitalist economy. And that we have to uh, uh, understand. So, whether it is America, I mean, America has stagnated. Nobody knows these things, you know, because America is always painted as something of a green pasture. Everything is happening in America. No. How many, how, how many millions of people uh, are languishing in poverty in America? So, whether it is Britain or America or any other uh, European uh, 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 nations, so-called advanced capitalist countries, are also incapable of developing society now. They have stagnated. Their economies have stagnated. They are, in a, they are able to exist as an economy because of the plunder of the third world countries, the plunder of the uh, uh, neo-colonial countries like India and other Africa and other Asia and Af African nations. And because of this, today there is a situation that uh, 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 no longer capitalism can develop society on a universal nature, on a global nature. Hence, even the revolution or the change that has to come will be of a universal nature. It will be of a global nature. And Trotskyism has always advocated a theory of not only permanent revolution that is fusing two stages, but of a universal nature, of a global nature, of a world revolution. And that's why as an international party or an international organization, we belong to an international called the Committee for the Workers International. 
and we have sections in 50 countries, including America, including uh, Africa, including Pakistan, in Russia, the so-called ex-Soviet Union, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, in these areas we have comrades who are working as political organizations. We have comrades and groups and individuals in 50 countries fighting for the ideas of democratic socialism. And that's the story. That, uh, and uh, we, we, we feel that uh, today the change is universal. If uh, you, uh, so change has to come, it has to happen everywhere. It cannot be in one country. It cannot be in one country. It, it has to be uh, on an on a all-world scale. And hence, we are striving. So uh, these are our ideas. And of course, you're all, you have your own set of ideas. But if you want to contact us, if you want to know more about us, there are two websites that you can go to. One is socialism.in. That's Indian website. The other website is socialistworld.net. That is our international website where you can uh, interact. You will know about the world in any part of the world, uh, what is happening, what, what are the uh, events that are taking place, how the complexities of capitalism is uh, uh, creating problems, and also how the fight is going on in those countries. So both these webs websites you can uh, visit and learn and if you want to join there is a joiner form in that uh, in those websites you are welcome to join